Look at this MC. He went from this to this. For all of his life, he's always had that one special person since he was a little boy, swarmed by 10 versions of her at their orphanage. Then, he got dumped as world peace calls for her innate talents that ripped her away from this blossoming relationship, and since that fateful day, it created a symbol for our boy, MC Rizzler Will. After getting dumped, he literally got picked on, bullied, and made fun of. Good thing he met society's punching bags. Dwarfs. I mean, look at what the real world did to Snow White. While society may spit on our boy with a super mean cow lick, this punch to the face marks the moment where our boy gets recognized by women and men. Spoiler warning, guys, for Wistoria, Wand, and Sword, Season 1, Episode 8. Shall we date? After a really awesome episode with high stakes and tension, with the best action scene that an anime can offer, this episode does a complete 180 to bring us back down to earth. This is just common pacing, a storytelling method that contrasts the episodes back to back, where one episode is high flying and the next one it's more slice of life. Well, building up for the next arc. So this episode opens up just how we thought it would. Everyone is having a swell time as Will helped regain the dwarf's honor. And of course, Donan asks Will about being scouted by the tower. How did it go? And Will doesn't need to respond because a slice of side sympathy is right there to care more about it than you do. Look at Colette complaining about Xion ruining everything when the story is destined to make her and Xion more likely an item than it is is for Colette and Will. It's a sad reality for us pro Will and Colette ship, but let's continue to watch Colette try to go on that date though with Will. Luckily for Xion, he can continue to avoid society's lower class, but for Julius, his antagonist days may be long gone as it is. Cause now, he's just an errand boy for the dwarves. He apologized to the dwarves, kept his word, and is now helping Gina's tavern momentarily as a server. After kicking their food, this is the start of a very humbling experience for Julius. Like Xion and now Julius, it only takes one humbling punch to the face. And failure to meet your goal to make you realize being a jerk doesn't give you the results that you are looking for. As Colette blames Xion for making Will look bad by creating, infighting, the peeps of lightning, fire, water, wind, light, you know, those different factions of the tower that help also make up the Magia Vander because of Julius losing at the Magic Festival event and losing to Will specifically. In his head, he likely didn't make the impression he wanted. I mean, he totally looked like a dick out there. Before the opening credits plays, Colette brings up a very good point to Workner Sensei about people recognizing Will's ability now and for people to stop bullying him by leaving him alone after seeing what a sword can do for public consumption. However, Workner Sensei teases that it's just not that simple. Always look for a good hook to an episode or a story in general because especially when there's like slice of life or downtime, it's always nice to hold on to something to get you to power through maybe some scenes or moments that you really don't want to read or watch. This episode is going to have a lot of Will and Colette and Roasty being involved, but for some people, they don't really care about the relationship dynamics. They care more about the plot. So this episode, it becomes a perfect example of what they use for the cliffhanger of the episode. They could have used that as the hook of the episode if they wanted to go that route. That scene at the end of this episode also makes for a great cliffhanger as it's the first major plot element being introduced in the story along with two new actual villains. In this case of Workner Sensei and Colette's conversation, it teases a new development for Will's character. We are so totally done with Will simply being bullied. He now becomes kind of a hot commodity. So the end of the intro, it's all about Will and how the perception of him is really starting to change. After the opening credits, the craziest shift happens for our little meek Will. We can now put the meek to sleep as he is just MC Rizzle or Will that rizzed the entire public with his dazzling display of his fist to face to none other than the special talent in Julius. Everyone wants Will to join their party for the upcoming all student praxis exam in the dungeon where they have the opportunity to get all the credits they need for the praxis side. All the NPCs comes out of the woodwork like the 
fakes they are. Like the true side sympathy she is, Colette tries to protect Will from the vultures. But even Will can't deny that being popular is exciting. It also increases his chances for other females to make their advances. Ain't that right, Liana? Just when the female NPCs feel all up on Will's hands, Colette slaps that hand away and then tells them that he's with her because they got a date to go shopping. The scene shifts to Colette freaking out on the bed about her date and Rose pulls up on Colette to semi-tease her. Colette is such a good girl and this is why I am a pro Colette and Will ship. You know the first thing that comes out of her mouth when she talks to Rose about her shopping date? She doesn't want to embarrass him. So Colette is totally into Will and is thinking of the perfect outfit to not only please Will but make sure she doesn't embarrass her future man that doesn't want her. Colette gets all dolled up for a man that can only exist in her dreams as she's all dolled up, cheeks blushing, getting ready to make every secret Colette Loire move she's strung up all night to help make her dreams of a metaphor of a cat on Will's head a reality. Even Will couldn't help but compliment a cute girl, upgrading her looks, making Will's heart doki doki. And just as their date proceeds with the cat on Will's head, be a reality one day. There's someone else that we also don't want to see coming. A new challenger that wants Will's head. Roasty. It's one of the most unfathomable CBs I've ever seen. Who would have thought to use their own? To block. It's almost like Roasty was sent by Elfie. And then they do the unthinkable. Hold hands. I'm with you, Colette. Will. Roasty continues doing the unthinkable and wants to take Will all to himself. And so Colette is not only hated by the creator of the show, they take it too far by blocking her romantic advances with gayness. At every step of the way, on his three-way date, Rosie inserts himself onto Will, while Colette is just forced to watch in every single scene. For any person that doesn't think that blocking doesn't have its karmic consequences, we of the Colette and Will shit faction will have our day when Rosie gets roasted. Will and Colette have a seat on the bench and she starts to freak out like all of us, but says it more nicely than I would have. Colette, she says, this dude ain't a chick, is it? That sounds very modern. He's totally a dude with a bigger lone sword than Will. And just as they talk about Will and Roasty's lone sword, Roasty pulls back up to hand Will and Colette a drink, setting himself up for Will to share drinks with him. And Colette pulls the it offers her drink to Will too, but Rosie does some gay jitsu and gets the gullible and naive to go maintenance his lone sword. So he can use his gay jitsu to continue blocking Colette's advances. We got ourselves a side chick trying to become a main chick using her earthly powers to fend off Rosie's gay jitsu. Rosie and Colette speak about all the ways they be trying to fill up all up on Will like the 10 Elfies did. Colette's dark past involves hugging Will body heat to body heat with their clothes on. But Rosie involves rocking out with their c**ks out during bathing. It's okay, pro Colette and Will shippers. There's only one cat that has access to Will's head right now. And it's not the frosted maiden from Alvis Vina. While Roasty shows his true colors to Colette, what they didn't know that from a love triangle to a love square, but no one could have expected a love trapezoid. Hoi. And Miss Perfect, Liana Owens House yanks Will to the side to steal him for her party's all praxis dungeon squad. It's the elite of the elite. We got two humbled assholes in the fiery Sion in the iced out Julius. We got Elf Will. I mean, I'm kind of jumping the gun here. Let's rewind. We got the high and mighty elf of the wind in Wignall, and we got the monotone personality of lightning. That sounds kind of oxymoronical. Just as Xion digs deep into his past of assholdery, Wignall quickly humbles them with some illusions. What we got ourselves here is the so-called elite of the elite, a regarded magical academy trying to form the best party possible to increase their chances to advance faster and higher into the tower. This is the kind of scene that helps exploit more character 
out of these newer characters in Wignall and Liana. Liana is clearly the leader of the bunch, but she is socially clueless and very monotone-like, while Wignall is a lesser asshole than Xion and Julius. With all five of them joining a party, it's only natural some good character development will be happening here, along with the beginning of the start of the main plot of Wistoria. Xion and Julius continue to be against Will joining their party as Liana makes the assessment that it makes sense for someone that has skills that they do not possess to join them or else we can't call the story one and sword. Wigno continues to show what kind of personality he has as he quickly reminds Xion and Julius being humbled by him the lone sword guy in which Julius reminds him that Liana Miss Perfect outperformed him. So Wigno starts to show another quirk to his personality as he does 100% acknowledge Liana to be better than him. And so he has all this else respect for her and naturally defers to her in these situations. While Wigno has magic and has prejudice to the dwarves like the others, he is clearly more logical and can defer to those he respects. Liana continues to present to us a dynamic shift in how we view the talented Julius and the Miss Perfect Liana. In reality, if you are already talented and strong, these characters would already be inside the tower within a faction. Clearly, Elfaria is the most dramatic example of this as she is already one of the five Magia Vanders. So being at the Regarded Magical Academy essentially means that none of them don't actually stand out. Otherwise, they'd be in a similar situation to Elfaria. Maybe not as Magia Vanders, but they'll be in the tower. Liana wants to use this all student practice to help bolster the tower faction's view on them as they all have big ambitions to be a Magia Vander one day. You know, it's the shonen thing to do in this series. Liana actually talks a little bit about her backstory, teasing us a little bit, but I guess we'll cover that as we start to move forward into this all student praxis within the dungeon. So the rest of the episode is basically Will building this resolve to join Liana's party and Workner and Edward Sensei explaining that they can basically earn all their praxis credits by going into the dungeon and clearing floors. The deeper you go, the more dangerous it is. Their entire goal is to survive, but also recognize and know their place. I'm sure everyone can recognize how this can lead into something that can go terribly wrong as the legitimate plot starts to bubble up and some people are gonna start dying. Just as all these student practices is about to start, Colette swiftly inserts herself into Liana's party because wherever Will goes, his side sympathy booty goes. She ain't trying to lose this trapezoid battle. And then we finally get a glimpse of two real villains that are not just asshole antagonists and one of them just nonchalantly locks off a poor soul's head with bloods and guts and everything. And this is why I like good hooks and good cliffhangers because I strongly believe in making the viewer think about something they want more of. So overall, this episode was a fun one, which was a polar opposite of the previous episode and one that was pretty different from the rest of the season, which is a sign of good storytelling. By keeping things fresh, we finally get to see the most pivotal characters form this relationship with Will after him getting bullied all this time. So now Will is getting this recognition not only by the pivotal characters like a Julius, Xion, Liana, Wignall, but from the NPCs as well, all of his classmates. Although most of this episode is more slice of life and we get to see this fun interaction between Will, Colette, Roasty coming out as holding hands with Will, we'll just say that. That was a nice shift for the beginning of the episode to slowly creep us back up to a legitimately main plot with real villains. This is going to be the most exciting element so far to this Wistoria story. If you guys thought the fight between Will and Julius was good, the animators are going to have their work cut out for them for all the cool stuff that's going to happen in this dungeon. And of course, while there's going to be a lot of high flying action in this arc, there's going to be a groundedness to this with obviously the characters we don't know that much about and characters we already know about that are going to have their moments to shine as characters. There is a lot to look forward to in the story story, but this episode as a whole did a great job bringing us back down to earth, feeling the results of the aftermath of Will punching the crap out of Julius and Julius being humbled by the doors. And this episode also executing all the funny things between Colette, Roasty, and Will. 
while at the same time they didn't make that lag on too long in the manga they didn't make that lag on too long either and they got us right into everything that we wanted to see from a main plot standpoint with two legitimately real villains that are evil so yeah guys let me know what you guys thought about this episode of astoria one and sword episode eight shall we date and do me a favor guys hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already check out my blog at otakusen.com and i appreciate you guys watching i'll see you guys on the next video